in Soweto is tough enough for humans, let alone a humble horse. Oh, it's horse. Oh, Here, they're pounded, not pampered. No braids and brushes, just hard labour. Yet Enos Mathakati, who started life as a groom for his white masters in the apartheid era, has developed a lifelong affection for these gentle animals. <laughs> to me, they're not animals, they're people. Because I've got the same blood I've got. I'll spend a lot of time with the animals. Even in my family, they'll tell you, I'll spend more time than I spend with the family. <laughs> got his chance to compete from Tony Lewis. He was once boss, Enos his servant. But it wasn't a barrier to friendship. He used to run my whole house. Uh, so we were very, very close, really. You know, as, as close as a, a good friend could be. You know? Against the odds, Enos established a reputation as one of South Africa's leading equestrians. The success and the recognition that he's got has never, never gone to his head. He has an incredible way with animals. Uh, there are not many individuals that I've ever come across that has that sort of feeling. He has a deep, deep love and feeling for animals. But the manicured mounts at the Pretoria show are one thing. Enos's mission is to improve the lot of underprivileged horses on his home turf, working for Soweto's version of the RSPCA. It's wonderful having him on the staff because he really has such a good feel and such good hands with the horses and he just has a very, very good, pacifying, um, easy, trusting way with him. Many of the horses work in the coal yards of Soweto, pounding the streets just as they did when Nelson Mandela lived here as a young man, and still indispensable to what is now a dying industry. Yeah, there's a lot of rivalry between the coal yards and the rivalry is also economically based. These guys need the money. They're really pretty much on the breadline. If they have their business taken over or stolen over by someone else, then they go and stab the horses. So we do have a lot of trauma to horses from... Um, pure rivalry between the coal yards. They know if they injure somebody else's horses, um, they put them out of business. Sadly, this horse is definitely out of business. The post-mortem confirming that the strong stomach needed to survive in Soweto isn't always enough. I find a, plastic, a lot of plastics inside there. What does that do to the horse? Well, this is a colleague which uh, couldn't come out and he's stuck there right in the middle of it. And it's a shame because he nearly came out. My best friend in this country. Hey. Congratulations. Thank you. Enos's passion for horses forced him to confront prejudice head on. Thank you. Thank you. He was the first black rider to compete in scores of events at home and overcame many a hurdle to become part of a special South African development team at the Barcelona Olympics. The dream came true. I told my brother when I was still young, I said, one day I'm going to go overseas. I think I was about 10, 11 years old. And my brother said, you mad? So what he answered me, you'll never see overseas. Hey man, how are you? Well, thank you. 
Enos was able to prove his brother wrong, just as he was on another memorable occasion, an encounter with the head of that well-known horsey family, the Queen of England. What a day. What a day. I have a special suit for that day. It's the next generation of black riders at home who are the real beneficiaries of this man's experience. Of the thousands of young hopefuls in Soweto, just a handful get this kind of opportunity. My dream is to see a black kid coming to the top, participating like any other whites there. But the sport is for the rich people.